Good morning, comic fans. Welcome back to Comics in 5 Minutes. I'm your ever-loving host, Shorty, and today we're going to get cracking straight on with The One Hand by Ram V, uh, with also art by uh, Lawrence Campbell and colour by Lee Luffridge. Now, um, when I saw Campbell, I actually honestly saw Aaron Campbell, um, and as I was flicking through, I definitely got a vibe that that might be a similar kind of look to it. And that's not a bad thing. Aaron Campbell is a fantastic artist. He's worked with Simon Spirits on fantastic, fantastic things, and I love the detail he puts in there. Lawrence Campbell does a very similar thing, and I really like it. He lays on the inks and the darks and the shadows really beautifully. Um, there is a, a sense of realism to what he does, but he also does huge cityscape kind of things um, with neon lights and deep shadows and the lights of police cars flashing by. Love it. Love his artwork. And I've got to say, Lee Luffridge is a colorist. He's somebody who's really going for estimation every time I see his work. Um, but he's up there with Geordie Belair for me. Because he saw Campbell's really deep shadows and his dark line work and his realism and made the colours pop. Like, it glows at times. The the neon-drenched cities and streets are fantastic. The fact that it almost all seems to take place at night when it's raining and he still managed to use a really vibrant colour palette. Sometimes it jars, but only when it's supposed to, when you're supposed to be shocked by what's happening. The detail on the crime scenes, the fact that so much work's been put into symbology and symbol symbology, like I've just watched um, Boondock Saints, symbolism is what I meant to say, um, in this uh, cipher that's been created for this crime, which is this thing you're kind of seeing there. And I'm very, very curious if anyone's going to actually solve this while the comic book is out. Um, people have the internet and can solve a lot of things. The look on it is brilliant. Like, from start to finish, every single page is exactly what it's supposed to, and it drags you in. Um, not just like the, the look of it, but the timings of it. Um, this is a noir comic book, 100% through and through, neo-noir for, uh, to be 100% accurate. But it's also really slow burn, which I like. There is moments where he's just having a conversation with somebody and we just get an entire panel showing uh, one of those little nodding birds that goes into cups of water. But just to, for a beat, just to show that we are taking a pause and we're letting something breathe for a little bit. And I do absolutely love that. Um, when I say noir, I do want to be specific in neo-noir, because after reading a few pages of this one, I get to a bit where it tells me the name of the city and the year, and the year is like 800 years in the future. Now, I'm not entirely sure why I didn't know this. I occasionally pay attention to what Ram V does. I read some interviews, but I had no idea this was going to happen. I had a wait what kind of moment, uh, and it says that I'm not the only one I've spoken to other people, and everyone's a bit like, yeah, I, I did not expect that. But it's handled really well. We don't get much of a sense that it is like deep far future. It's still very realistic, kind of within the cyberpunk window. It isn't cyberpunk though. There's no like transhumanism. Yes, there may be a, a, an all cops and bastards kind of thing coming, but mostly we're doing it from the eyes of a detective or multiple detectives. Um, and we don't have much in the way of transhumanism. Yes, there are robotic sex workers, um, but so far that seems to be the only thing that we're really seeing that shows us that it is 800 years in the future. Now, I don't think Ron Visa kind of writer is going to have done that for no reason. I think we are building up to the fact that there is something going on that we are not thinking about here. Um, and I don't know if it's just me being paranoid and looking at story beats where I'm trying to figure something out ahead of time, which, you know, it's detective fiction, it's canon if people do, but I'm seeing things and wondering why I'm seeing them the way I am. The fact that it always seems to be set at night and it always seems to be raining. And somebody actually makes a comment on the fact that it's always raining in the... Uh, Oh, I've got the name of the city now. Give me a second. It's going to bug me, and it's a cool name. Let me just find the uh, the accurate page here. Uh, Neo Navina. Um, and yeah, it is always raining, and uh, it always seems to be night for us. Not just that would be unusual. That's kind of like a fairly solid noir thing to do, but making reference that it's always happening. But then there's other conspiracy stuff that's in the background. People talking to each other about things. The fact that the detective just retired comes back for... The third time to solve a crime is already solved twice, but then keeps happening. The fact that you can't seem to leave the city. Occasionally, airplanes just disappear. I think there's something deeper going on here than just this crime fiction. But even if it isn't, it's so well done and it's so rich and leans so well into noir tropes I absolutely love. We don't really have much of the detective doing his own monologuing, which is fantastic. I love it when that happens. But we get people talking about him and he's just going around silently, stoically investigating the crime. We get these conversations about who he is and what people think of him. Adding layers to details, layers to the setting, layers to the sense of what the world is and the noirness of it all, the genre of it all. Everything comes together immaculately. It is absolutely spectacular. And all I can say now is I really hope that Dan Woods 
doesn't let me down. And when he comes back with the next part of this one, because it's um, the sixth finger, I believe, I hope it's going to land in just the right kind of way to compliment this, because it is being brilliant. Uh, that's it for me for now and for the week. So, until I see you again, look after each other, everyone. Stay safe. Bye.